Welcome back, Rankers. I wanted to talk to you about four things today, and I'm hoping I'm going to remember them, because this is the third time I've tried to record this. Firstly, creating great content. Secondly, looking for keywords that come from that content. Thirdly, getting that content shared. And fourthly, understanding the difference between key phrases and key phrase synonyms and why it's important. I think that was all of them. Okay. So I wrote a couple a blog post a couple of weeks ago, did a video about it, about some email spam that we got from SEO companies. Anyway, I dug a bit deeper and it turns out that it's weird, really weird. So I wrote another blog post about it. Anyway, the upshot of that was that we started to rank for a phrase that I didn't expect to rank for. We started to rank for a phrase called SEO experts and SEO expert. Now, that blog post was not about that specific phrase, which is when I saw it turn up, I thought, geez, I'll go and write another post about SEO experts, right? So the decision process that I went through was that I wanted to rank more for that phrase, but I couldn't just write one of these keyword dense posts that you see on so many SEO sites where they're just talking about the same key phrase over and over again. It becomes as boring as hell, right? So I have to do something. I have to write something that people want to read, right? So I, I dug a bit deeper onto this story, and this story is interesting in itself, and I, I encourage you to go and read this blog post. And it was about this guy, Damon Rosier. Who is he? Well, I found out that he doesn't exist. Well, not that person's name. The guy does. And the way that I found out that that guy existed was that... I took a screenshot of his photo, a screen cap, and I uploaded it to Google Image Search. If you didn't know, you can do this. You can take an image off your desktop, upload it to Google Image Search, and Google will go and find other images in its index that match that one. And you can see here, this guy is also known as Ruben Ruta, Loris Gundry, Carly Yani, um, and also he's a handsome businessman at age of stock, uh, age agephotostock.com, right? Stock photo, right? So all these accounts here, presumably a fake Google account, which is a big no-no. If, um, if you get caught, Google can, can shut you down pretty much. And why that was interesting is because it was an interesting journey to go through that, but there were a couple of SEO companies that were being framed during that. So I wrote this post in the hope that I'd rank higher for SEO experts. Anyway, I wrote this on, oh geez, about uh, three days ago, and nothing really happened. I was on page two for SEO experts. Then the story got shared today on Twitter by a couple of lovely people. Um, uh, Chris Thomas, who was featured in the story, and uh, this guy, Michael Balistrieri, sorry if I said your name wrong, uh, I, I don't know which town he comes from, but he's, uh, he goes by the handle SEO Milwaukee, you work it out. And also by Hannah Ingham. And as soon as that happened, I thought, I'll just, go and, I'll just go and check that search again. So I did it again and I went, oh, boom, we're on page one for SEO experts. Above guys that have got SEO experts or experts actually in the domain name. That was pretty cool. And it only happened after it got shared on Twitter. Now, I'm not suggesting that, hey, you go and create a piece of content and then try to get it shared as many times through Twitter. That's not the way it works. All these things are intertwined. If these people have got uh, Twitter hooked up, to, say, to their, their Google Plus accounts and all these other things, Google knows a little bit more about that person. This is why authorship and Google profiles are so important is because every time you publish something and if you've got your social networks hooked up to you, your Google profiles, Google knows the sort of content that you share and you're not just a robot. You're not one of these uh, Damon Rosiers. Yeah, you can try to game it. It might work for some of the time and it might work for a little bit of the time, but it's not going to work all the time. And But I want to show you something interesting. This here does not have SEO experts anywhere, anywhere in the description, in the title. So it's not even this post, this post. <laughs> it's not even this post that's ranking for it. It's not even the previous post where I was talking about SEO experts that are ranking for it. What post is ranking for it? Well, it's the post that I wrote about SEO consultant Melbourne that's ranking for it. 
Now, you may remember that after I wrote the post, if you've been following along at home for a while, after I wrote the post SEO Consultant Melbourne, we inadvertently went to number one for the phrase SEO Consultant. And look, I've been getting a bit of hate mail or hate comments on, um, on YouTube and a few other places saying that, uh, you know, that's not really a, um, um, a good search because, you know, Google knows who you are and blah, 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 incognito doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. Uh, hate is going to hate. But I just want to show you this one. I'm using Opera. I'm not logged in with anything. I'm actually using a, uh, where are we? I'm actually using a VPN. So bring that over here. So you can see here, Google, as far as Google is concerned, I'm in Phoenix, all right? And if you can see here, I'm searching google.com.au and Google doesn't actually know which town I'm in, all right? So it just says search nearby. It doesn't really know. So we are legitimately number one for SEO consultant, even though we didn't target that phrase. And the reason I'm showing you that is because the phrase that is, the, the page that is ranking for SEO experts is actually that page. Now, have a close look. You can see here we've got SEO experts in bold, SEO expert in bold, SEO expert in bold, uh, SEO experts in bold. What's in bold here? SEO consultant. So Google knows that if someone's looking for an SEO expert, they're probably looking for an SEO consultant. That's how clever Google is. So what you've got to do, you've got to go to Google Trends and you've got to look at these different synonyms and work out which one should I be targeting. If you target one properly, depending on the competition for the other, you may still appear for that. So for instance, here's a search in Google Trends and we're looking at SEO consultant, SEO experts and SEO expert. You can see here, for some reason in Australia, SEO consultant peaked in earlier this year uh, and it says here that you know they're, they're pretty similar. SEO experts and SEO consultant and SEO expert are all around the same. Now, if I go to Google Webmaster Tools, where I first found the phrase, you can see here where we started jumping up was just around the time that I published that, that blog post. It says SEO experts is around 500. But that's when we're ranked at number around number 30 for the phrase. Now we're on page one. So I would expect that number to change. It may go up, it may go down, you don't know. But you're not gonna get a really good fix on the volume of searches for a phrase in Webmaster Tools until you're, you're in that top 20. So you can see here, SEO expert. In Google Webmaster Tools, it says it's 90, but it's come up 300 spots to number 45 when over the course of this month. So it, it's only come up, if you click on that phrase, it'll tell you when it appeared, there it is there. So it's only come up recently. So even though it says it's only 90, I would expect it to start to reflect what we're seeing in Google Trends, which are to be similar around SEO experts, a similar sort of volume. Uh, SEO consultant, according to Google, uh, Webmaster Tools, it's saying, if we just get rid of this filter, it's saying it's about 1,300 searches a month, and it's saying on average, we're number 21 for that. So we're not possibly number one in every part of Australia, but as far as Google's concerned, on, on that particular search, and certainly in Melbourne, I think also in Sydney, I'll just check that, uh, so let's we'll pop Sydney in here. Yeah, still number one in Sydney. So potentially other states in Australia were not number one for that. But you can see, get a feel for the volume. So if we're 1,300, say, if this is 1,300 up here, at, you know, around 100%, then, you know, you could say this is around a thousand or something like that. So I'm gonna watch that one pretty closely to see what happens. But the thing I wanna emphasize here is that if you wanna rank for a key phrase, write something interesting about that for a key phrase that people wanna share. Because that's how Google's going to now establish, you know, it's not just about authorship and people having authorship. It's what's also connected to those individuals' authorship. Where else do they publish? What does Google think of that individual um, over all of the, the publishing that they do. 
uh, uh, how many followers do they have, all those sorts of things. That's what's important. So this was quite uh, quite a ride. I went and interviewed a guy at uh, a company called SEO Next. I ended up apologizing to the guy in the blog post. Um, there's a podcast up there for this. There's this Google image. Incidentally, this Google image search, um, it's probably a really good handy tool for um, if you're an Australian footballer. You might just want to throw an image up of yourself to see what sites you're appearing on that maybe you shouldn't. Um, but it's... It's, it's a really cool tool, actually. Google doesn't know what this image is, all right? It just matches the pixels up of, of what it has in its database and throws back other ones. And that's how we found out that this is here. But for me, it was an interesting journey, and it was an interesting uh, story to write uh, because of what I found. And it just so happened that it matches my keywords. The other thing that you should be aware of, too, is that synonyms are one thing, but different spellings are something else. So some people will say, if you type, uh, let's see, not that anyone's probably going to type this, but if you type, uh, what is it, search engine optimization Melbourne, that is, you should rank the same for the same spelling with a Z because Google knows that you're in Australia and the Z spelling is kind of the American spelling. And so the results should be about the same. Not true, okay? Not true. So there you can see it. We're nowhere for the Z. I don't think we're anywhere for the Z. Oh, well, we're down the bottom of the page, below the fault. Anyway, well, number, okay, number four, after places. Anyway, um, a significant difference as far as clicks go, right? So if it was exactly the same, we should be up in the, in the, in the top two, but we're not. And it's even, the, the difference is even more stark if you remove the word Melbourne. So you've got to make a decision on the keywords, which one's going to get you the, the best conversions and the most traffic. So it's pointless getting a lot of traffic for a key phrase that you're not going to get conversions on, right? So the decisions to make around publishing and content are what spelling of the keyword or what synonym or what phrase is going to get you the greatest traffic. Use Google Trends to do that. Write something that's interesting that people want to read and they want to share around those key phrases. If you've written something previously around that topic, around that key phrase, link to it so people have a reference point. That does two things. It gives the user a better experience and sees that you've talked about that at some other point. And it helps Google see that you've got more content about that subject, thus it lifts your authority for that subject or that group of key phrases. And, of course, if you want to find out what the emerging key phrases are and what's happening with them and what else you should be focusing on, make sure you check into search queries on Google Webmaster Tools I do it every day for my clients and also for myself. Hopefully that's helpful, and we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.